Question number three, James Shaw. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Does he stand by all his government's policies? The right honourable Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, yes, particularly those that the Greens voted for, uh, where in the budget 2017 uh, the government lifted the incomes from the 1st of April next year of the lowest income households in New Zealand. Order, order. Before I call James Shaw, members have a right then, once the questions are asked, to listen to, or to hear the answer. I had difficulty hearing that answer simply because of the interjection was coming from, directly from my left. I require substantially more cooperation. Okay. Supplementary question, James Shaw. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does he stand by his government's decision to accept merely a quarter as many refugees per capita as countries like Australia, Canada and Sweden? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, we stand by the uh, additional refugees that are being taken in over and above the quota of 750, uh, of around of 250 per year, taking us up to 1,000. And we also stand by the process by which we deal with refugees, which is to uh, commit considerable resource, I think worth around about $100,000 per year per refugee, to make sure that they can attain the language and employment skills that will enable them to be participants in the New Zealand community. Supplementary. Supplementary question, James Shaw. Can he confirm that his government cut the number of refugees New Zealand takes from Africa and the Middle East when it's precisely those people who are in the most precarious and needy situation? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, there will be a range of opinions about uh, the relative need among refugees. Uh, but the government did respond to the uh, very large number of refugees from Syria by uh, opting to take uh, several hundred more of them over the next few years. Supplementary. Supplementary question, James Shaw. Is he aware of other countries that have recently changed their rules to cut down the number of Muslim refugees and migrants, and does he support their approaches? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, no, I'm not aware of that. Hmm. Supplementary. Supplementary question, James Shaw. What does he say to Yibeth Morales Ayala, a former refugee from Colombia, who pleaded with the government to increase the quota to help people like her be reunited with their families? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, I'd say to her the government has recently increased the quota in response to the problems in Syria, uh, that it's now embarked uh, with mainly the churches on a community uh, sponsorship program for refugees with the pilot starting just within a month or two, uh, and that we're committed uh, through building new facilities and through extensive support for refugees to make sure that they can succeed in New Zealand. What would he say to Bishop Order, Just supplementary, supplementary question, James Shaw. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What would he say to Bishop Justin Duckworth, who has called on the government to show leadership on refugees and said that Kiwis quote have the capacity and the willingness to do so much more end quote. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, as, as, as I just said, we're now working, uh, with immigration officials working with the churches uh, with whom I discussed this matter in the last couple of months around a, a community sponsorship program which enables those Kiwis who are interested in uh, welcoming refugees and supporting them in a sustainable manner uh, to see whether that's a way that we can increase the numbers. Supplementary. Supplementary question, James Shaw. On World Refugee Day, will he do the right thing and offer a helping hand to families who are fleeing war and prosecution by wel persecution by welcoming at least 2,000 refugees per year to New Zealand? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, we are currently gearing up uh, to deal with the increased numbers that are coming in now and getting the uh, community sponsorship programme started. Uh, and uh, we're not about to announce very large increases in the refugee intake. Point of order, Chris Hipkins. Mr Speaker, I wonder whether you could explain uh, why on a previous occasion you ruled that it was acceptable for the Prime Minister to tell the opposition to get some guts, but you ruled that the phrase that I just used in connection to the Prime Minister is not in order. 
because an interjection like that, it, 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 dep it depends on the uh, tone of, and the behaviour of the House at the time, but an interjection like that, I consider to be... An interjection like that I consider to be unparliamentary, and I asked the member to withdraw and apologise, and he did so. <laughs> Question? Is oh, is yes. Another fresh on point? what basis was no, that no, unparliamentary? No, no, I dealt with that. I've asked the member to do so. Now, if the member wants to raise, it's exactly the same rules for everybody here. If he wants to relitigate it, then that is disorderly in itself, and I'll be asking the member to leave the chamber. If he wants to raise another new point, order. If he wants to raise a new fresh point of order on another matter, I'm only too happy to hear from him. Order. <laughs> the member will now leave the chamber. No, it's a double standard. The member will leave the chamber. Question. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order in this So just to clarify, uh, is it now your ruling that get some guts is unparliamentary? No. And that uh, member now uh, trifling with the chair and in risk of uh, also joining his colleagues. I'll deal with matters at the time, but an interjection like that was simply done to inflame the situation in this House and to create disorder, and I ruled accordingly and asked the member to leave. Que question, question number four, Kunwal Singh Bakshi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.